same thing. Same kind of similar problem, but a little bit different. So we need to first create the triangle. So therefore, we're going to call the C. Even though I put A there, that's going to be our C, right? Lowercase c is directly across, which is 22. And then we got to kind of determine, like, well, where do we want b to be? And again, it doesn't matter where you want b to be, right? You can put b up top, put it on the bottom. I don't care. Let's put it back up top. That's fine. All right, now again, if I need to find the height, right? If I need to find the height, I got to think about what other piece of information now would I kind of like need? So again, like if you're finding the height, create your right triangle and say, all right, if I need to figure out this height, um, I need to uh, basically be able to find out what this side length is, right? Mm -hmm. yes? yes? Which would be my side length of A. You guys agree with me? OK. So let's figure out. Then this is little a, and that's little b. So again, I don't want you to be fixated on what I drew up on the board. Because some people are not paying attention, and what they're going to do is they're going to get stuck on these problems is because they always want to write things how they are on the board. You've got to be able to adjust. If you have these angles, you can use these angles. You know that that's an obtuse angle, so you'd write it like this. And then just, it doesn't matter how you label these. All right. Um, now, you have what we want to do, we want to look for using the law of sines. We want to look for a ratio. And you guys can see we have a ratio, right? We have one of our ratios um, in this case. And our ratio in this case is going to be C over, um, C over um, side C over angle C. So you do 22 over the sine of 100 degrees. Now, I need to solve for A, the side length. Do I have angle A? No. no. So what am I going to do? Because I don't have angle A or side length A. Solve for A. Huh? Solve. Yeah? So how can I find it, though? Do you remember? <laughs> right, which is, do you remember what it's called? The interior angle sum theorem, geometry, right? All angles add up to? All the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So A equals 180 degrees minus 35 minus 100, which is 55 degrees. So therefore, I can say little a is just equal to the sine of 55 degrees. Now again, when I'm checking your work, yes? Huh? That would be 45 degrees. Thank you. I just went by what somebody said. So yes, it'd be 45 degrees. Good job. Um, so that's 45. Well, that's all right. Whatever. Um, that's why we have calculators in this unit, right? We can always double check our work. So, and so now we can solve this, right? And the nice thing, again, guys, is having your variable up in the numerator. Since you have the variable in the numerator, if you do, you just need to give me one equation. This equation is fine, but I'm going to show you guys the next step so you guys can verify your work. Um, you could also give me this equation to show your work to solve for A. And then I will do this as well, and then I'll have you guys confirm with me. So 22 times the sine of 45 and then divided by the sine of 100. And I got 15.796. Second that? Yeah. And again, guys, if you don't have a calculator, I'd recommend going and grabbing one so you can follow along. All right, now, that's the hypotenuse. But we need to figure out one of our angles, right? Like, here's your right triangle. We need to figure out one of the angles. Now, the nice thing about this problem is can we easily figure out one of these angles? Can we, can we figure out one of those angles? Yeah, just using either. Um, now, this one is going to be a little bit more difficult because we don't know this portion. So we can't use this angle. But we can easily figure out this because these two angles are supplementary, right? So they add up to 180. And therefore, if I need to find the height, 
I could say h is now equal to, um, you, let's just write it off here, sine of 80 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is the height, over now my a. Now, since I'm going to be using this in the formula, I am going to store this. Remember I taught you guys how to store it? If you don't store it, write down all the digits. But do not use the rounded answer. One thing I mentioned last class period, do not use the rounded answer. So this is rounded. Don't use this answer in another problem. I'm going to store it. So I'm just going to hit my stow button, and I'm going to store it as alpha a. All right? Or write down all the digits and use those in your calculator. So therefore, we can see that h is equal to my stored a times the sine of 80 degrees. All right? Now again, either way, to find area though, We need 1 half. Now again, I had two angles here, right? Since I already have C and I just figured out A, which angle would I want to use? So the formula that I gave you guys was B times C times the sine of A. But that one's not, gonna, that one's not really, remember, we can move these all around, right? If I already have the side length C and I already have side length A, that means I would just need angle B. So again, like I know it's, con like, it's confusing, but you guys can move this stuff around. You don't have to be stuck. Um, so I can do, this is the same formula. It's the same formula. You can move them around. Just like those triangles, it doesn't matter where A, B, and C are. Move them around. So therefore, this is 1 half. My A was stored, so I just put brackets around it. You don't need to put the brackets around it, but that's the way I just like to write it. C is 22. And then I have the sine of B, which is 35. So now I'm just going to type in my calculator, 0 0.5, which is 1 half, times alpha A, because I stored that, times 22, and then times the sine of 35 degrees. And I get an area of 99.664. And then obviously, that's going to be units squared. Um, obviously, if we had a dimension, you could write that as squared units. Anybody have any questions on that? You can't get stuck on the variables in the equations. Those can get moved around. These two formulas are exactly the same. Because A, B, a, B and C guys are, are arbitrary. Like, they're not fixed in one part of the triangle, correct? Yes? No? I could, change the, I could change these to A's. I could say that's A and that's little a. So it doesn't matter what the labeling is. Make sense? Now let's finish this problem, though, because we figured out A. We got bigger than A. So the only thing left is let's do B. So let's just figure out B real quick. Um, now, when I figure out B, notice how I'm using uh, C over sine of C again. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to use a calculated answer. right? Just because you found A, like just because you found side length A and you store it, just don't, like, don't use that unless you really, really have to. Okay? So my advice to you here is, again, you guys can solve the, here's your equation. And then you guys can just type this into the equation. Are you guys OK with me not writing it in this format and just going to the answer? Yes? You do the same thing. You multiply by sine of 35 on both sides. So what you type in your calculator would be 22 times the sine of 35 and then divided by the sine of 100. And I'm getting, please confirm with me, 12.813. Yes? No? Where's your calculator? 